Good morning. My name is James Richards. I'm the youth director here at Blackman United Methodist Church. Uh, it's an honor to be with you this morning uh, as we get to dive into scripture together. Uh, I had the privilege of being able to hang out with some students a couple of weeks back and to talk around the idea of cancellation, looking at the story of David and Mephibosheth. And we were talking about the idea that we live in a society that's become okay with cancellation. Um, due to COVID-19, you've probably had all sorts of meetings and activities and events that have become canceled and that that's just kind of become a way of life that we've had to deal with. Um, every time we buy a plane ticket or we book a hotel room, there's a cancellation policy. Um, we even have devices like noise-canceling headphones that can block out what's going on in our environment around us. And even on our social media platforms, there's ways to, to cancel people even in our lives. You can block someone where they can't find you anymore, or you can unfollow someone to not see what they're doing, or uh, you can even go so far as to mute someone where you're pretending to follow them, but in reality, you're not seeing any of their pictures or their, their media that they're posting on their feed. Uh, so there's all these different ways to kind of cancel people or, or block things out of society um, that, that we don't want. And it's interesting when we look at the story of David and Mephibosheth, we see something that's radically different from this. Um, Mephibosheth was a guy that had been kind of canceled by society. He was Saul's grandson, and Saul was the past king, which meant that like Mephibosheth normally would have been wiped out. Uh, he, he would have been taken out because he had connection with the, the past line of royalty, uh, which was not viewed well back in ancient days. It also says that he was lame in both feet which meant that he had like the status of a beggar back in ancient days. Um, so he was a guy that if anybody was, people had probably put him on mute. Uh, he had kind of become an afterthought, and Mephibosheth was probably pretty content with staying invisible because he was worried that if David found out about him, uh, he could kill him. That's what might happen. But instead, David seeks out Mephibosheth to do something radically different than anybody else would have expected. David asks, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Um, and he finds this guy Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth is like terrified because um, of what we just talked about. But David tells him, don't be afraid. This is in verse 7, chapter 9 of 2 Samuel. He says, don't be afraid, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Like this is not just niceness that we're talking about. Kindness to David was this permanent inv invitation to eat dinner with his family for the rest of Mephibosheth's life. It was to say, hey, come be roommates with me in my castle forever. That's what kindness looked like to David. So I want you to think about who in our society have we put on mute? Who are the people um, that are invisible in, in our modern times and maybe even in our own personal lives? You know, maybe it's not even that there's people that we've actually slid the mute button on social media for, um, but we kind of just walk around like we've got noise-canceling headphones on that we're content in our own world and we've kind of blocked out seeing other people that are outside of our environment. But when we, look at this, when we look at the ministry of Jesus, when Jesus was here on earth, Jesus didn't walk around with noise-canceling headphones on. And the problem is that when we have others on mute, we actually have Jesus on mute. Because to say that we're following Jesus, to say that we're Facebook friends and have our blue check mark next to Jesus' name, um, means that we have to go where Jesus goes. And where Jesus went was to the people that were on the fringes of society. He went to the outcasts. He went um, to those that were invisible and overlooked by the rest of the people of that time. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 25, 40, what you do for the least of these you do for me. It's this idea of the upside down kingdom of heaven that the first will be last and the last will be first. That to say that we follow Jesus as Jesus followers means that we have to go and to do the same. That it's our job to take off our headphones, to unslide the mute button, and to see people around us as, as what they are, as people. That for Jesus, it would have been really easy for him to stay up in heaven and keep on his headphones and not worry about us. 
But Jesus took off the headphones and came down and took on flesh and came and died for people like you and me. So that just like David did for Mephibosheth, Jesus then invites us to become part of God's household. He invites us to the dinner table of heaven so that we can live in the household of God for eternity if we, if we accept him and ask for forgiveness in our lives. Jesus makes the first move towards us um, and he invites us to that place of relationship just as David does with Mephibosheth. That's what kindness looks like is that invitation of relationship. So my question I want to leave you with is what would that look like for you this week? What would it look like for you to take off the noise-canceling headphones? To maybe slide someone off of mute or maybe to, to unmute Jesus and to see, Lord, I see where you are going. I see where you have called me to. How can I follow you into that this week? What would that look like for you? If you will, will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray that you would open our eyes, that you would open our ears and our hearts, Father, to see where you might be calling us into. Who are you calling us to show kindness to? Because Father, you have been so merciful and grace, uh, gracious to extend your kindness to us first. But Father, you call us to do the same and you call us to follow you um, into those spaces to extend kindness to others. Would you show us where that might be this week, Lord? It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Guys, thanks for hanging out this morning. Um, let us know if you need anything and I hope you have a great week uh, and hope to see you soon. Bye, guys.